what is going on everyone welcome back to another swift tutorial in today's video we're going to be learning how you can create a collection view which is very reminiscent of instagram stories or facebook stories or i think youtube's mobile app even has something similar where we've got these circle images and we're using a collection view so it's super efficient and yeah we're going to be basically building this so that said don't forget to hit that like button down below if you're new to the channel, welcome. If you're returning, thanks for being here. Get Xcode ready, get excited, and let's get into it. So as per usual, let's get started by creating a new project. We're going to stick with a single view application, and we'll call this Stories Collection View. And let's save it on our desktop. Pick our simulator of choice up here, which in my case, is the one that's already open and it's the only one. Let's say Command R to build and run. We should see our empty app pop up in here in just a moment. And then we'll get right into the collection view itself. So once Xcode decides to stop being slow and build, like so, we'll see our empty app and let's get into it. So let's get started by going to the viewcontroller.swift file. And we are going to be implementing this collection view entirely in code, not using the storyboard. Um, I think it's easier and it's also more indicative of how it's done professionally, perhaps at uh, Instagram or Facebook. Um, rather, I'm aware that this is how they do it at Instagram and Facebook. So anyways, let's, uh, let's get into it. So the first thing we need to do is create a property and we'll call it collection view. And it needs to be a collection view, of course, optional. And the reason we want to create it here is because we're going to assign it in view to load with some other um, elements, particularly a layout. The other thing we're going to need is to conform to the UI collection view delegate and the UI collection view data source. And lastly, the UI collection view flow delegate. UI collection view flow layout should be delegate. Let me uh, expand this Xcode window to give ourselves a little more room to work. Should be UI collection view flow. UI collection view delegate flow layout. Always mix up the words. So cool. Now that we have these, um, what we also want to include in here are the two minimum functions that the collection view data source requires, which is number of items. We'll just return zero for now and sell for item. And we'll just return a UI collection view cell for now. We're going to want a custom one, of course, but let's we'll get to that in a second. So. We have this optional property up here. Let's actually create it. So this collection view is going to be a UI collection view. And we are going to create it. Whoops, we want a UI collection view, not a cell. We're going to create it with a frame and a layout, not just the frame. So we're going to do for the frame dot zero. We'll properly lay this out in a different function. And for the collection view layout, we'll pass in layout. And of course, we need to create this layout. So let's say layout is a UI collection view flow layout. Collection view flow layout. And a layout, as the name implies, uh, controls things like the direction that we can scroll, the item size, the insets, and things like that. So let's do a couple of things in here. We're going to say layout. If I can spell it correctly, dot direction will be horizontal. We're going to say layout dot item size will be CG size. And we will do um, 150 by 150, just some arbitrary number. Layout dot shows, rather dot, let's do section insets first which will be UI edge insets. And then we're gonna, for, uh, we're gonna do for top, left, right, bottom, just zero all around. And let's see, I think that's everything in the layout. What I was trying to get to earlier is collection view dot shows horizontal scroll indicator as false. 
and collection view dot delegate itself. And of course, make sure you add the question mark in front of the collection view variable because it is in fact optional. But we want to add it as a sub view now to view. So we're going to say guard let my collection equals collection view. And we can finally say in here, view add sub view my collection view. So that's basically the collection view. And before we run it and see that this in fact does show up on the screen, let's do two things. First, let's set a background color to let's say red so we can just see it. And then let's also override view did layout sub views and call super. And of course we want to set a frame, which will be a CG rect. The X will be zero, Y will be a hundred, width will be view.frame.size.width, and the height will be 150, which will match the height of our item size. And lastly, we're gonna do dot integral, which will round up any of these numbers uh, to the closest integer value. So let's hit command R to build and run. And we should successfully compile and we see that we have this collection view up here. Now we actually need to create the custom cells, which will be the circles and basically put them in here so we can see the actual collection view. So that said, we're going to create that in code as well. So let's click on this folder, right click new file. And we want a subclass of a Coco touch class. We're going to be subclassing a UI collection view cell. We can leave this also create nib file unchecked and let's call this circle collection view cell hit enter twice to create and save it. And let's get into this. So we want um, a couple things. We want to first create a static identifier identifier, and we're going to use this to actually register the cell. We also want a init function and this init function will just override the standard super init with frame. And we want to create a couple UI elements in here, rather one UI element, but we want to also be able to lay it out. So we're going to override layout sub views and call super layout sub views. And the element we're going to want in here, of course, is an image view. So we're going to say private let image view. Let's actually call it my image view will be an image view. And we're going to def define the static properties on it uh, in this format. So anything that's not going to be variable between each cell, there's no reason we need to be defining that every time. So we can do it in this format. This format is called an anonymous closure, super popular um, in industry, and I personally also prefer it, so maybe a little bias. But on this image view, we're going to say um, clips to bounds is true. And we want the image view to have a content mode of scale aspect fill. We're going to return the image view. And we also want the image view to be circular. And to do that, we're going to override its layer properties. So we're going to say image view dot layer masks to bounds, which basically once we set the corners, it'll make sure that the uh, image view doesn't actually overflow the circular corners. And we're going to say corner radius will be 150 over two. And we're getting 150 because that's the item size that we used. Um, in the collection view. And I believe that's all we need for this image. So in this init, we don't want to forget to actually add this image view to the cell. So instead of doing view add sub view or self add sub view, we want to do content view, add sub view, image view, rather my image view. And content view, if you're not aware, is basically 
uh, as the name implies, the view where you can put content. And the difference between this and the self view in the collection view cell is this uh, respects the insets around the cell. The other thing we want to do in here is we want to say this image view dot frame equals content view dot bounds. And finally, we want a way to actually configure the image for this image view. So we're going to say public func configure with name. It'll have an image name and it'll be my image view dot image is UI image named name. And I actually lied. There's one more thing we should probably do in here for good practice, which is override prepare for uh, reuse call super and nil out the image for this image view. And now we can, we can actually go and use this image view in our collection, rather use a cell in our collection view. So let's go back to the controller and do a couple things. So the first thing we want to do is actually register this cell. So the way we do that is simply collection view, register this cell for this identifier. And if you recall, we created this identifier property in here for this very reason. And actually it looks like we've got an error in here because it also requires us to bring in this required initializer. So you can simply click that and hit fix and it'll automatically add this code in. Um, we don't actually use it. This is just a requirement of subclassing. Um, anyways, let's go back to the view controller. So now that we have it registered, we can actually return this type of cell. So in here, instead of returning a normal collection view cell, we are going to say, let's sell equals collection view DQ a reusable cell with this identifier for this index path as this type of cell. So that'll return that type of cell and let's not forget to return it here. And for the sake of simplicity, we'll just do configure with an empty string. And let's add this to be 20, rather update this to be 20. Let's remove the background color for the collection view and rather let's go into our cell and let's set a background color for this image view. Um, we'll bring in some mock images in just a moment, but I want to actually show that the image view, the circular images are now present in our app. So hit command R and we should see our images in here, but it looks like we don't. So let's figure out why. So we're configuring it, we're initializing it. Let's say background color is red and see what happens. Okay, so they're definitely there, but their background color is black and they don't, are they circles or are the lines throwing me off? Um, cool, so at least they're there. So we're saying background color, oh, it's black because clearly I can't type. So let's make those blue. Okay, making progress. So let's get rid of this background color. Try that one more time. And we have our circles, cool, beautiful. So we're gonna actually um, make the background color of this collection view uh, white. So we don't have this ugly black in the background. Um, so let's actually go to the view controller. And we're gonna say collection view, whoops. We're gonna say collection view background color is white. Hit command R. Awesome, so we got these circles now. They're a little big, but of course you can always change them. Um, let's bring in some images and uh, use those images as the actual image. So let's go to our assets um, file here and I grabbed some images uh, before starting this video, these three particularly. So let's create car one, car two, and car three. 
whoops, let's ignore my antivirus pop-up. And for car one, we'll drag in this one, car two, this one, and lastly, car three, this one. And let's also use the proper format of using models. So let's actually create a uh, private let models array up here, which will be our image names. So we'll say car one, car two, and car three. Let's copy and paste this a few times for the sake of having um, more than three cells. Now, for number of items, we're, instead of returning this hard-coded number, we're going to return models.count, and we're going to configure with the nth element in a models that we're going to pull out of the models array, which is the image name. So now we should get our image names. Uh, going through properly and we should see those images in the cells like so so this is super reminiscent of uh, instagram stories that you see above your feed or uh, i think youtube even actually has similar formats to this on their mobile app or their stories so yeah that's basically how you do this um the very last thing that i'll show in here because i know people are going to ask uh, sometimes you'll see borders around these circles and they look pretty nice um, in my personal opinion, I guess. So the way you can do that is you can say the image view, uh, layer border width, give it a width, and give it a border color, which is a CG color, so you have to use the longer format, so you can put a suffix of CG color at the end. Hit Command R. And boom, you have Instagram stories in your app. So of course right now when you tap on any of these, nothing happens. Um, but of course, you can just override the did select uh, item at position in your view controller, which is a part of the collection view delegate. Um, but yeah, that's basically it. There you have it. Um, if you like the video, don't forget to smash that like button down below. Helps a lot. Subscribe if you're new. If you have questions, uh, don't hesitate to comment. Always love hearing from you guys. If you have any suggestions, uh, leave those as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.